good afternoon gentlemen and ladies uh, i have been given the task to moderate this session though we plan to make this session of more of a discussion rather than uh, moderator asking the question and we would try to leave some time at the end for uh, question and answer also so that if there are some queries that those can be answered uh, i have a very eminent panel with me and i would request uh, each one of you to give a brief introduction about yourself uh, your name and your company and then tell some views about the topic for today uh, so shall we start with uh, you uh, surjit good afternoon everyone uh, my name is surjit mukherjee i represent uh, widex india uh, this is a danish uh, company which is into uh, hearing aids uh, specifically we have two uh, channels uh, b2b and b2c i represent the b2c channel in uh, in which we have uh, hearing aid centers by the name uh, bloom senso hearing centers uh we have 55 uh, centers across the country today and uh, we are the first uh, organ we are the we are the first players in organized uh, retail in the uh, hearing aid industry thank you hi my name is deepak chandani i represent worldline we are a large payment processing company globally and in india as well so i see e-commerce from a transaction point of view the number of transactions flowing in and flowing out as also physical commerce so it's an interesting industry i like to watch hi i'm vijay jain uh, i run a company called aura uh, we've got uh, 35 stores across 20 26 cities and in a gold dominated market uh, i think we are india's largest diamond centric uh, player hi my name is uh, basweshwar anyapanavar uh, i'm a senior dialogue director with mindtree uh, uh, i look after the uh, retail cpg testing arena Uh, so work with uh, primarily retail and cpg customers worldwide thank you my name is rajesh jain i manage uh, business for lacost in india and maldives so very interesting and uh, varied kind of background this panel has so i would ask uh, vijay vijay what is your view on uh, the topic today when we say that people or the customers do not buy online because of its because it's convenient but because but because the alternative is inconvenient so what is your idea because you you come from uh, a category which is a precious jewelry would people still buy precious jewelry online because traditionally in india people would like to go to the jeweler see the jewelry see the design and then they will get it converted what is your experience in this so if you look at it just on a broader perspective i think every uh, 50 years retail sees a huge significant change 150 years back the railroad uh, gave birth to departmental stores 50 years later i think the car uh, the popularity of the car gave uh, place to niche uh, specialty stores then you had the discount stores and so on and so forth and i think it's it's one of those uh, stages where we're going through huge amount of transition aura is present both online and offline uh, i think one thing is that uh, from a uh, online perspective i think there are certain transaction re related uh which makes it very easy for us to purchase so if i'm buying a low involvement product or if i am buying a, a long tail product which is a certain kind of music i think online makes it very easy uh the entire issue of offline i think is very very interesting is uh my point is that today consumers are willing to you know hazard all kinds of traffic whether it's road whether it's parking issues to go to a mall because it's an outing and they have this entire experience about entertainment food all of that but when it comes to the issue of going to buy offline into a store uh, we are seeing that some amount of consumers are moving away from the jewelry category itself it's a high involvement category and in the mid segment i think the consumer still prefers to walk into the store because there's this entire connect about site it's about looking at the jewelry it's about uh, you know the music the entire ambience and most importantly the emotional connect with the consumer so i i think uh, in the mid segment the consumer would like to walk in at the entry level which is a gifting segment where it's transaction oriented i think the consumer is very happy to uh, you know uh, just order it online so are are you saying that despite all the inconveniences of offline store first of all do you think that there are inconveniences uh, involved with offline uh, buying by the customer oh absolutely <laughs> I, i i and i think that, that that's a part of that entire storytelling yeah. for from a woman's perspective because what we've realized in research that the woman every, every now and then would take out her jewelry to polish it and she will reminisce everything who she went with what was the environment what was the occasion 
how she bought it. So in a high involvement, high emotional connect product and a non-standardized product because a mobile phone is very, very standardized. Uh, jewelry, if I say a three gram ring or a seven gram ring, it's very difficult to make out. In those categories, I think the consumer today still wants to hazard all the challenges uh, to pick her piece. So despite all the challenges, all the inconveniences, customers for that category would still like to buy offline. Absolutely. All, I think the two exceptions are standardized products like Solitaire's, which are high value, or the gifting item. Okay. Okay. Surjit, you come from a completely different industry where I feel that a lot of personal connect is required. You deal in hearing aids. So what is your take on customers buying online versus offline? What is more convenient? What is not uh, as convenient? Or this is not relevant for your industry at all? Um, first of all, uh, you know, uh, like Vijay just mentioned about uh, the emotional uh, aspect. Now, uh, hearing aids uh, per se, you know, are not as uh, staid as they look. There is a lot of emotions, uh, you know, uh, that goes behind uh, a user's decision to actually wear those hearing aids. First of all, a uh, little bit of a background. Uh, there is a bit, you know, there is a lot of social stigma behind uh, a person actually accepting that he's got a hearing loss. So there's a lot of... Um, uh, convincing that he requires, you know, for him to take that final decision. Yeah, I'm going to go for a hearing aid. So at the very at the very entry point, you know, there has to be a face-to-face -face interaction uh, with a you know qualified uh, an, call, I mean with an expert, and in these cases, qualified audiologists. So uh, in this, I mean, in our in our industry, it's absolutely important that there is a face-to-face -face interaction that happens uh, from the very beginning. Additionally, and you know, I'll just add to this, uh, hearing aids are custom made, which means um, the one for me might not be suitable for you, although both of us may have the same degree of hearing loss, because maybe we are working in different environments. So what that means is there's a lot of customization involved. And then, and so again, there is a lot of face-to-face -face interface but that's can't, required. Can't customer come to you, let's say for the first visit, but for the repeat buying of hearing aid, I'm, I'm assuming that hearing aids also go out of fashion or they, they, they break away in that the customer has to make a repeat purchase. Wouldn't they like to buy online rather than offline because offline might be inconvenient to go to a doctor, like not to your industry, but uh, if we go to a doctor, they make us wait for hours, even if we take an appointment. Now, I feel that's extremely inconvenient for me. I would rather have a doctor online with whom I can either chat or tell him my history take that personal attention when I'm talking to him one to one on one rather than going to him. So similar thing in your industry, can't it happen at least for a repeat purchase? That's a good question, uh, Rajesh. Uh, what happens is uh, typically we've seen um, uh, the average time, uh, number of years a customer uses one particular hearing aid and then decides to upgrade or change is uh, between two and, a, two and a half to three years. Now, what happens is during this period, there is a hearing loss, uh, additional hearing loss that's happening. So therefore, the type of hearing aid that suited him once, two years or three years back, may not really be the one that suits him now. So therefore, again, that element of face-to-face -face interaction can't be ruled out. Okay, so you're saying in your industry, practically having an online presence is practically non-existent. Uh, we understand that, uh, you know, the overall from a consumer mindset, people, uh, you know, there's a bit of a hype on online today. So people do search for all types of solutions online, including hearing aids. So what we really see going forward is more of an omni-channel, uh, you know, approach, wherein there are hearing tests available online, or there are apps, you know, that will come out and, you know, they're beginning to come out now. However, that will just let you know that you have a hearing loss. But that won't tell you what type of hearing loss you have. And again, the type of hearing aid depends on the type of hearing loss. So you see, you still can't you know, get rid of it. Sure, Surjit. I'll come back to you on that because I have another question linked to this. But before that, Basu, uh, over to you. See, you come from uh, an industry which supports retail industry. Yep. So what do you think that offline is inconvenient and that's the reason people don't buy it there? Because uh, uh, online is more convenient? Yeah, uh, my view is uh, 
Uh, it surely depends on three or four factors. Uh, one is obviously uh, in a place like India, traffic is very, very important. Will I go and buy uh, 2,000 worth of grocery by bearing two hours of tra traffic on Silk Board Junction in Bangalore? It's very difficult. Uh, but surely uh, I have seen in different countries, in mature markets uh, in the UK, uh, I have seen a, a large retailer uh, not having an online presence. Surely they wanted to sell fresh to their customers. They wanted the customers to come into the store and buy fruits, uh, vegetables, and meat. Uh, I have seen a, a customer uh, who uh, did a lot of uh, five billion plus revenues on their website uh, in the US, in the Midwest, and uh, they were very happy, and, and, and their sales are increasing at a CAGR of 30% plus. Uh, I've also seen a discount retailer uh, in the US uh, who uh, till recently did not have uh, an online presence. Uh, they wanted the customer to come and look for the product uh, in the store uh, because they offered, you know, uh, something like a, a Polo uh, Ralph Lauren uh, T-shirt for four dollars uh, a week, and then uh, kept on increasing it. So deals uh, is what drove customers uh, in such an instance. But surely, in something like India, where uh, traffic is an issue, uh, where uh, different categories like grocery uh, are are much mundane and you know can be bought online. Uh, safely and easily. Uh, I mentioned to you about uh, medicines now being available uh, online. Uh, there's a huge fight going on, uh, legal issues uh, involved, but still, uh, I do feel that there are different categories. Another point I want to add, uh, very strangely enough, uh, in the mature markets, a lot of uh, you know, people above 45 are, are, are trying to buy online. Uh, they're not very con uh, you know, uh, easy with uh, laptops and computers. Still, they want to go online for deals. So uh, uh, something similar. Uh, is likely to happen in India, and uh, that's an interesting trend I have seen. Okay. Uh, Deepak, to you. Uh, you are uh, coming from an industry which gives payment solutions. So how has it affected the online market uh, versus it used to be earlier? Do you think payment solutions uh, to online market has made it more convenient for the customer vis-a-vis -vis the alternative option when the customers would go to the store and buy it there, there also, you have a lot of payment options, including credit cards, debit card, cash. There's a personal connect. But do you think that your payment solutions uh, have helped our online uh, industry to get, get more traction? Yeah, sure. So uh, when we talk about India, actually, offline is growing at 20% uh, plus per annum. Uh, online is additive to it, adds to it, increases it further. The solutions from a payment point of view are pretty similar, uh, both online and offline, because a lot of fulfillment that happens uh, even in online happens with cash on delivery today. So to that extent, the payment option doesn't change so much between online and offline. Uh, the use of cards is still very limited in uh, online payment as it is in offline payment. But what's interesting is that today, online payment in India is of the order of 12 to $14 billion. And it was about $5 billion three years ago. So it's a huge growth that's happening. At the same time, this 12 to $13 billion is a very small proportion of total retail purchase, probably 1.5%. And when you look at our neighbors like China, you find that online purchase there is of the order of $600 billion as compared to India's 12 billion. So clearly, worldwide, and in fact, in our own neighborhood, people are moving to online purchase. And the reasons that we have found through our research is that consumers are saying, I have more variety when I go online. I can compare more easily. I can um, uh, look across styles, look across shops. So it's much easier for me to make a choice. And finally, as far as payment is concerned, I have the same options. So you tend to find that it's not just convenience, but also an ability to actually surf, compare, etc., which is driving consumers online. So, so what you're saying is uh, online is more convenient. But are we also saying that offline is inconvenient from, for the customers? They can't browse, they can't see the, and compare the prices or uh, other features of a product? They could go to a large format store and compare different uh, products there. For sure, but no large format store will carry every brand in the category and every variety within that brand. So clearly, online does give you that much larger 
variety to look at across stores in at a much faster pace and at the time you want to do it so there is indeed a lot of convenience that online is offering to shoppers and like i mentioned to you i think when we were talking uh, online purchase used to be dominated by electronic goods pcs and laptops and and phones now in developed markets and including for example in china the top categories for online purchase are household goods garments things like phones have fallen down uh, in terms of priority so clearly the ability to browse and, and compare etc is terribly important in this 